Hello and welcome to another episode of Learning to Live in the Present Moment. My name is Ted Robinson and I'm your host today. Today we're going to be talking about not having enough time to be here now. I was uh, recently watching a, um, an article uh, on, on the internet in which a young man who was on a sailboat off of California, I think Southern California, missed a humpback whale coming up just a couple of feet away from him because he was so engrossed in his smartphone. He missed it completely. And there was a photograph from another boat looking at him with the whale in between going vroom. He missed it. He was out there to see that kind of thing and missed it. And, you know, I used to pity people like that because I, you know, I go into restaurants and there's four people at a restaurant looking at their phone. Nobody's talking to each other. Everybody's texting and talking on their phone or looking at the internet or checking their email or doing something, but nobody's talking to one another. Nobody is here now. And by the way, I'm no exception to the rule, so don't, don't think that I'm for a moment holding myself above anybody else. I was just down in Cancun, Mexico, and I went to a little dolphin show. And as the show began, I decided, let me take a picture of it with my smartphone. And so here I am taking a picture, but I couldn't quite get it clear because you have to anticipate. And I said, well, let me do a video. So here I am taking a video. And before long, all I was doing was looking in the smartphone instead of looking at the dolphins. I was looking at their reflection, their image, their little tiny image, when they were right there before me. And here's the kicker. When I went to look at the image afterwards, it never showed up. Apparently, I didn't hit it twice or something, and I got nothing, and missed the show. And that's the purpose of this talk today. Don't miss now. This is all there is to life right now. This moment, right now as you're sitting here, standing here, whatever you're doing, watching me, this is the only moment that's real. A half an hour ago, you were doing something else. That's not real right now. It's your, your mind remembering. It's your memory. A half an hour from now, it's your imagination. This, right now, is real. This is the only thing that's real right now. This instant, this moment, this present moment is real. Do I know if an asteroid is going to hit me the next minute? No. So there's no purpose in worrying, fearing, doubting, uh, anticipating that when it's not here. It's all a function of our mind. And by the way, that's our ego mind that does all that. The ego mind is in charge of the past and the future and in judgment. That's it. It loves to remember and remind you of things that happened in the past that you didn't like, that you hated perhaps. I'll get them. Resentment comes up. And all of a sudden you're off to the races in another drama, suffering through another drama. Is that the way you want your life to be? I don't think so. But most people don't even realize they're in a drama. They think that's the real thing. Do you want your life to be all about anticipating the next thing? Oh, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. I can't, I, ah. And none of that might happen? Is that really real? No. That's your imagination of what could go wrong, what might happen. None of it might happen. But the mind does not like to focus on none of that might happen. It wants to focus on what if that happens? I have to be prepared. There's a whole strata of our population that's dug uh, shelters, packed it with food and generators and all kinds of things just in case the world comes to an end. And I'm not here to judge anybody, none of them. They're fine. They're doing what they believe in. Recognize one thing, their beliefs. This is the only thing that's true and real. Right here and now, this is what is real. All the fears, anxiety, anticipation, worry, concern is not real. 
It might be real, it might become real, but it's not real now. All the resentment, anger, frustration, fear, uh, rage that comes from the past, it's not real now, except in your mind. But here's the, here's the important thing. The reason I call it the ego mind is because the ego likes to keep the drama and suffering alive in your life. It actually wants that suffering in your life. I'll be back in just a moment to explain why. Don't go away. The reason the ego likes to keep the drama alive in your life is so it has something to focus on. So it becomes the primary focus of your life. So you can remain in the past, dragging that past around with you, dragging it into the future so you don't, and into the present moment so you don't feel present. You're not here. Because it knows that if you actually abandon that past, and, it, and didn't fear the future, you would just be here right now. And guess what? You wouldn't need the ego mind anywhere near as much. There's no purpose to it here. The present moment takes care of itself. You're just here. If you need to go out and think, go out and think. There's no problem. But the whole idea of this show is to train you, teach you, show you how to become present more often so you can learn to live in the present moment. There's nothing to really learn. <laughs> That's the irony of this whole show. It's just to be. When you are present, there's nothing to do except stand in awe of heaven here on earth. Heightened awareness, perhaps, yes. Observation, perhaps. Absolutely. Appreciation for what's here with us now? Absolutely. That's living in the present moment. And that's all you have to learn. It's natural. It's what we do as human beings. But here's where we get into trouble, invariably get into trouble. We drag the past in. Yeah, but... This moment would be a whole lot better if that hadn't happened. All in the past. And what goes with it? Judgment. This moment would be better, that's a judgment, if that hadn't happened into the past. And now we're in suffering. Why suffering? Because we're thinking about all the things bad that happened to us, all the wrong, negative, harmful, terrible things that happened to us in the past. Are they happening now? No. But are we dragging them into the present moment? Absolutely. Why? Because the ego likes it. Because here's the deal. If the ego doesn't have anything to deal with, if it doesn't have anything to think your way out of, if it doesn't have to cope with, anxiety, resentment, frustration, fear, worries, if it doesn't have to deal with any of those things, what's the ego to do? Basically just judge. And that's okay, judgment's a good thing. We're not here to eliminate judgment. Judgment's necessary. How would you know what to have for breakfast, lunch, or dinner? How would you know what tie to put on or what dress to wear? Judgment's a necessary part of life. There's nothing wrong with it. It's when judgment gets carried away and everything is judged, including yourself. Your mind will eventually turn on itself and judge you if you get caught up in judgment. See, there's nothing wrong with the ego. 
It's here to judge. It's here to use to re recollect the past or anticipate the future. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't want to mistake it, uh, be mistaken about that with you. There's nothing wrong with it. It's when we believe in it and get carried away with it. That's when we suffer. You know people that live in the past. Oh, why did I ever let her out of my life? Why did I ever him, let him out of my life? <laughs> Times were so much better back then. Suffering. Do you really want to suffer with what's not here now? Or do you want to worry and take yourself into the future? That's when things get out of hand. That's when the suffering begins. When we languish in the past or anticipation of the future and drag it into the present moment so the present moment is gone because the mind is overwhelming it with all these other thoughts from other times. And again, the ego does that because it likes to. It loves it. Suffering is what it feeds upon. So here's the way in which you can find your way out of the ego's I don't, want to, I don't want to even judge the ego. I, I will not say what, what came to mind. I'll show you a way to overcome all of that in just a moment when we come right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. So the way in which you can overcome the ego's appetite for past and future uh, events or anticipated events overtaking your present moment is to become mindful of them. Mindful of the ego, whatever it does. You see, I'll, get, I'll tell you a little secret. The ego doesn't like to be seen doing its dirty work. I'll call it dirty work knowing that that's a judgment of my own, of my own ego, actually. The ego doesn't like to be seen dragging you back into the past, dragging up all those old things that bother you to this day. The ego doesn't like having you see it dragging your attention into the future and keeping it there to the exclusiveness of uh, the present moment. It doesn't like that. So what happens is, as soon as you watch your ego, as soon as you observe the ego, it stops. That's it. It stops. And as soon as it stops, you're back here in the present moment. Right here, right now. And you can suddenly look around and go, I'm actually here now. I am here. Wow. Wow. This is it. This is the present moment right now. Take a moment. Feel it. Now, did you notice your mind came in? Yeah, but. Did you hear that? Did you feel, hey, I have a lot to do. What are we doing staring at each other? Did you feel any of that? If you did, that's just your ego mind trying to take you out of the present moment. You see, that's what it wants to do at all times. And I'll tell you why. It's job security. It feels like it might not be needed soon. And that's why it does it. If it's not needed, well then, it feels like it's completely shot. It's gone. There's no purpose to it being here at all. So it's always trying to fill the gaps. I can tell you that from my own experience. When I was a lot younger, I'd be in a conversation, if there was a, a lull in the conversation, I would say almost anything just to fill the space. My ego needed to do that. It felt awkward. It felt fragile or something, but it had to fill the space. I'd, I'd say some of the dumbest things in the world just to fill that empty space. That was all my ego. 
And I suffered for it. I tell you right now, I suffered a lot. Until one day I realized, look what you're doing. You're just filling an empty space. What would happen if there was just empty space? And so I tried it, and there was just empty space. And I felt relaxed. I was in the present moment and didn't know it. Everybody just went, nothing to say. And I felt okay with it. And eventually I started to deepen into it. As you deepen into that quietness, that stillness, the silence of the present moment, you discover some very profound things. The language of God is silence. And the more silent and still you can be, the more you can hear the voice of God. But we tend to fill up the space all the time. We've got to be on that phone. We've got to look around. We've got to be doing this. We've got to be doing that. And that's why we miss it. You know, I've lectured here many times saying, God didn't stop talking to us 2,000 years ago. God is talking to us all the time through that humpback whale that the guy missed on the sailboat. Through the dolphins that I missed by looking at my cell phone. We all miss things all the time. And we don't have to see everything, of course. But it would sure be nice to start realizing as we're missing it in that moment that there's more here, more available to us if only we just quiet our mind and observe. And when our mind comes up, you can even say, oh, I see what you just did there, ego. You reminded me of my schedule. You reminded me of the television schedule for tonight. What's on tonight? You reminded me of oh, what so-and-so said to you at lunch or dinner or three days ago. Because you want to fill the gaps. You feel uneasy with the space. You actually think, ego, that you're not needed. But I'm here to tell you, and you can tell your ego this. I love you, ego. I wouldn't know what to do all the time. I couldn't keep my schedules. I wouldn't have lists of things to do. I would forget everything if I was just present all the time. So I'm very happy that you're here with me. We're here together right to the very end. I'm not here to abandon you, ego. I want you here as my companion. You're my primary assistant. I will never let you go. Now that's something the ego would love to hear. <laughs> you can take a moment to tell your ego right now. I'll never let you go. I'll always be here with you. I love you, ego. Now I know how silly that sounds. Believe me, I, even as I'm saying the words, I know it sounds silly. But you'd be surprised how healing that can be for your ego and how your ego just may allow more silence in your life, more stillness in your life. And that would be learning how to live in the present moment more of the time. That's the idea. As you learn how to, to coexist with the ego by simply watching it, that's your first step. Becoming mindful of yourself, your small self. It's your big S self, you know, big S, the big S, and the small s. The small s is the ego, the big S is the God force within that exists in the silence. But just like God, God is patient. God will let that ego run all at once. You can spend a few more lifetimes that way if you want. I prefer to become more mindful every day and notice my ego when it's doing things. Sometimes I just say nothing and notice it. Other times I say, wow, that was a good one, not ego. You got me good on that one. I was yelling at that guy in the car. You got me. Thanks. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just noticing. Look, I did it again. Today on my way home from the court, I, I was so angry with so many slowpoke drivers. Aren't they watching the light? Are they texting? What are they doing? And then I suddenly said, oh, that's my ego again. 
sit back and relax. Okay. My drive home, as soon as I did that, was much better. I was more relaxed. I enjoyed it. I didn't have any problems after that. So the idea is to become mindful first of the ego. Watch it and recognize it. You can talk to it or not if you, as you wish, but the more you notice it, the more it retracts. It doesn't have as much play in your life. And you calm down. You become more quiet and still and present. And that's the idea of living in the present moment. You can't live in the present moment every moment. You'd be like this all the time. So you do need to have interactions. You do need to think and you do need to use your memory and your, and your anticipation through a, you know, your imagination. But not so much. Be here now more of the time. And then you'll see big changes in your life. And you'll see things coming through to you that you never thought could. You'll feel more centered, more grounded, and your life will become much more alive in the world. I hope that helps. By the way, each Wednesday night, we have a borrowing benefits group here at our Center for Inner Healing, which is located at 26 St. Paul's Place, Hempstead, New York. 11550 if you want to come by GPS. It starts at 7 p.m. and goes till 9. We do a lot of emotional freedom technique, which is a simple tapping technique. If you'd like to know more about that, go to youtube.com and you'll find uh, videos on there of me doing the group uh, and parts of the group. Uh, it's under Ted Robinson EFT. Ted Robinson EFT. And you'll find a whole bunch of them. There are about 50 or 60 videos up there now. And uh, even these shows go up there soon. And some of them are up there already. And you'll find them there as well. Uh, we also have on Sunday night a tapathon. And a tapathon is where we uh, do EFT on the telephone. And we use a free telephone service. Uh, it's not free for you if you call in. Make sure to use a free service. And you can find out the number and all the information about that on our website at centerforinnerhealing.com. That's center for inner healing, all one word, dot com. And just look up on the events page and it tells you all about the Tapathon. And that starts at 7 o'clock as well during the uh, regular sta Eastern Standard Time. Otherwise, it's during Daylight Savings Time. It would be at 8 o'clock. So that's about it for now. Oh, one more thing. We have this cable show here and we also have it on Fios. Uh, we have it on Cablevision and Fios each week. And there's plenty more that we do in our events. We teach quite a bit. And we'd love to have you come and join us for any of our events. So just check out our events page on our Center for Inner Healing website. And you'll see all about it. So that's about it for today. We'll see you next time, same time, same place, as we learn to live in the present moment together. Have a wonderful day.